नमस्कार गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम वेलकम टू द एडिटोरियल एज द डेली न्यूज एनालिसिस आई एम भुवन अपूर वझा जस्ट लेट्स हैव द सिस्टम चेक फर्स्ट इफ यू कैन हियर मी ऑल राइट इफ यू आर एबल टू सी द स्क्रीन बिहाइंड मी कम्प्लीटली फाइन इफ एनी वन हुज वॉचिंग दिस लाइव क्विकली जस्ट लेट मी नो इन द चैट एंड वंस अगैन वेलकम ईच वन ऑफ यू हु इज जॉइनिंग मी लाइव एंड दोज हु विल बी वॉचिंग दिस ड्यूरिंग द कॉर्स ऑफ द डे एंड ऑब्वियसली देर आफ्टर ओके uh this is the editorial edge 8 am daily morning where we discuss take an in-depth look at a topic in fact a couple of topics look at questions analysis all of that is done in mass okay so uh the topics that i have for you today now obviously ideally i would have covered uh the indo us uh, current uh, visit by the prime minister okay probably uh, discussed in detail say uh, what has been done good morning what has been done in terms of uh, say the mou signed and what is the outcome of this whole visit but i think that will require an extensive session probably around 30 35 minutes so i was hoping to do that in a separate video altogether good morning coder how are you thanks thanks for letting me know okay uh, so we will do that india us but you know obviously let's let's have the whole uh, visit conclude first so that we can understand the key takeaways obviously i think he is headed to egypt after this the prime minister good morning good morning everyone welcome welcome so we'll take a look at that topic but for today let's let's go deep into two topics one obviously is a report that was released yesterday i think yesterday or day before the global gender uh, index gap index so that's a second topic for the day we'll take a look at the global gender gap report which is released by the wef okay by the way this is a question okay previously a question that was asked by the upsc they in fact just mentioned this report and said well who publishes it who comes up with this report so obviously good morning good morning good morning thank you for joining lekam thuburi first time i'm reading your name welcome okay so uh, this is a uh, going to be our uh, second topic the first one we'll take a look at is cyber security okay now cyber security is something again since we are we are a country that is expanding massively in terms of say digital penetration right digital india is become a reality upi payments are now common place all of that is pointing towards what that we are a, a community as a nation we are online which means that there needs to be renewed thrust on cyber security so we'll discuss cyber security today okay it's a very important topic especially from the mains perspective you're also looking at organizations issues initiatives not just at the say global level but also at the say national level right so if i were to say ask you uh, what is the buda budapest convention related to okay simple question the budapest convention so now you should be able to at least tell me which one is it related to is it related to say the cyber security or is it related to global gender gap you know questions like that can be framed which is why it's important for today's class to pay attention okay it's a very easy class if you just pay attention there's not a lot of uh, confusion here okay so again for those who are uh, joining me for the first time feel free to go ahead join my telegram channel i upload all pdfs everything that is required in terms of say class output that will supplement your understanding of the topic that is provided yesterday i forwarded a link of a very interesting article that i had read on climate financing okay and so i hope that it's being useful it is of immense use in fact because these are topics that you need to gain mastery in right you can expect questions say not just in mains but thereafter anywhere any stage of the examination you are supposed to have the adequate information the adequate analysis as well as the uh, correct opinion the fact based evidence based opinion all right so that's the focus of this class go ahead join my telegram channel scan the barcode and it will take you right to my telegram channel all right so the first topic for the day guys let's straight away jump into it is to do with cyber security cyber something to do with the online space so how do we make sure that our cyber assets are safe what are the challenges but before you come to the challenges the way forward the policy initiatives you have to realize that the whole nature of say cyber security has undergone a paradigm shift okay so initially what you had was say just limited to viruses today you have say complex attack called say denial of service okay phishing hacking all of that has come up now so something from say viruses then worms okay you had botnets now you have insiders so all of this is what it is showing that this is a technology this is a problem that is going to keep increasing especially when you take into account that you have say ai now 
okay so again the ramifications of that the negative consequences of that also need to be factored in okay so this is a problem that you straight away first realize that the more uh, technologically adept we become the more digital penetration is in the country, the more access to people have, say, digital services, the more the chances of that someone will misuse some part of the whole digital infrastructure for their own benefit, for their ideological benefit, for their own adversarial benefit. Okay, understand it that way, that this is a problem that's going to keep increasing. All right. So let's go forward and look at this, this whole chart, you know, how, how it has evolved is very important for you to understand. So from viruses in 1977, we have come up to say cyber espionage or cyber warfare. If you have been following the Russia-Ukraine crisis, okay, just reading at the articles, you will realize that technology is a major factor in the outcome of this uh, whole crisis. Yes, you have say jammers being used, uh, hacking being done of say the opponent's systems, rendering them like completely useless. Okay. Radar jamming is being done. So technology is being done on a like, massive basis, guys. The Russia-Ukraine crisis is a prime example of where warfare will be headed in the future. Of course, soldier is very important, critical. Okay, But then you also need to be adept at this particular tangent, not just say conventional warfare. Okay, Conventional warfare is what? Where you have, say, soldiers, battles, tanks, okay, jets, all of that is conventional warfare. So conventional warfare is obviously important, obviously, no one is denying this. But at the same time, you need to make sure that your cyber warfare capabilities are equally good. Okay. Now, again, think of it as this manner. You must have seen, say, oh yes, Bulbul, we are behind Bangladesh in gender parity. We'll come to that uh, second topic, just in 20, 25 minutes. Okay. Okay. So when coming back to this topic now, so look at say our critical infrastructure, okay, our, our say power supply, our power grid, alright, or say you had a recent attack uh, on AIMS, so you had say the sensitive information of so many patients that could have been compromised, right, so you are looking at critical information guys or critical services that can be directly hampered by cyber warfare, okay, so it's again of prime importance that as a country, we have a lot of awareness first and then first as a nation obviously you need awareness but more than the nation you need organizations to be sensitive of it can you understand that if say aims can be attacked its data can be compromised then do you realize that every other organization is fair grim nothing stops the adversary from say going after any other organization which means that organizations need to include cyber security as a basic part of their operating philosophy. Do you understand that? It's extremely crucial that there are mechanisms that are put in place organization-wise. Obviously, you and I come after this, the individual. But for an individual, what's the maximum that you can do? Create awareness. Okay. That, okay, don't click on, say, unsolicited links. Or say, if someone gives you, asks you for an OTP, don't just send it, okay? That's a individual level that you can teach. But organizational level, more important. Say, you should have backup servers, okay? You should have backup servers. What happened in, uh, say, uh, AIMS was that the server was compromised. All the data was compromised. Now, the persons, the person, the hacker who did it, well, demanded money. But if you had, say, a backup server, you wouldn't have to pay money to get your data back. This is how it operates, no? So they'll have access to your data and then they'll say, oh, if you want it, well, pay me such and such amount in say Bitcoin or this coin or that coin, whatever. Okay. So what, how can you like circumvent that whole scenario? Have backups. But then backups cost a lot of money. You see, backups cost a lot of money. You're looking at say essentially uh, so many huge uh, hard drives that you have to basically purchase, the servers that you have to purchase, maintain, you know, and because daily you're adding uh, patient data to it, no? So it's a costly proposition, okay? It's not easy to maintain, it's not very cheap. So this, this is the way, method that we are going to follow. For cyber security, it's essential that you begin from say uh, the organization level and then come to the individual level, okay? So let's look at it. This is how it has evolved, guys. Sit back with your chai coffee and just understand it. It's not a very complex topic. 
but then it's of importance that you know this. So from viruses, you have come to websites getting hacked, malicious code being introduced, worms and trojans. What are they? Worms and trojans? That say suddenly uh, you download a particular file or install a particular file, which has uh, uh, an embedded uh, trojan software, which will install itself in your uh, uh, mo mobile phone or say your laptop. Okay, and thereafter it takes over. So you do not know that you have installed a virus or a, a trojan by yourself. You have no idea that okay, just by downloading that particular file, you have compromised your system. So as an individual, you can understand, important. But suppose if you are a person who is in say charge of, again, you will enter the services, become some high ranking official, you have access to critical data on your laptop. Now again, if something happens like that, you are able to, you, you are, by mistake, you download something and the uh, laptop is compromised. Imagine what happens now then, your information is compromised. So you see, organizationally also, you need mechanisms in place to make sure that your people do not leak out critical data because everything is online, no guys. Right from say Digital India, UPI that we talk of, everything is being done online. Citizen services are being delivered online, right? Citizen services such as what? Aadhaar enrollment, this enrollment, fingerprint, this, whatever. Everything that you can think of, passport, everything is happening online. Yeah, you want to go for a ch medical checkup, you go ahead write your email and phone number and your past medical history and then submit and then book a criti uh, like an appointment. All information is there. Do you realize? So it's very critical. What's, what's the organization that takes care of this on the national level? The NIC. Okay. If you have seen, say most of the government websites will either end with .gov.in or will end with .nic.in. Have you seen this? The National Informatics Center, okay, it's responsible for this. It takes care of this particular communication, making sure that communication is secure. So most government officials will have websites or email IDs that will be something so xyz at nic.something.in. Realize? So you have secure servers. If you just go back, go to like think of say the American example, Hillary Clinton. What mistake did she do? If you are aware of it. What she did was, she used her personal email ID to basically mail and go ahead with say uh, US official, US documents, right? So the equivalent of NIC in America, whatever it was, she did not use it. She used say Gmail or whatever, okay? Now Gmail might be a secure server, but then its control, its access is not with the government, it's with Gmail. But NIC's access control is with the government. You are able to monitor who's logging in, who's logging out, okay? So this is important, guys. You have to realize that this is the trajectory we are looking at. Now we have come to cyber espionage and cyber warfare, which is a reality, right? If you have noticed in the middle, sometimes what happens is Indian hackers, okay? Or hacktivists, you can call them. They'll, firstly, what happens is some of our organizations get hit. Say agricultural department of some, uh, some particular state, its website was hit by someone from say Pakistan, the whole website was defaced, something uh, atrocious written on it. So immediately the Indian fellows now will uh, counter back. So this is what? This is cyber warfare happening but a non-institutional level. It's individuals like you and I who are good at hacking, okay, and who, who are doing the right thing. And if our institutions get hit, well they are doing it but at a non-institutional level. But what's required is that institutionalize this whole thing. If you know of it, if you have read of it, China in fact has a whole, uh, well you can call it a whole sub uh, uh, organization within the military, which is exclusively for cyber warfare guys. Exclusively. All they do is target other countries, their critical infrastructure, at least study about it. Make sure that you can strike when you want to strike. Do you realize? So not every warfare is to be fought across the Himalayas, okay? So this is important. Go up, going forward now, so look at this quote now. And I want, uh, also want you to uh, write this down, an air-gapped system. Write this down, air-gapped system, okay? So look at this quote, guys. 
The only system which is truly secure is one which is switched off and unplugged, locked in a titanium safe, buried in concrete bunker. And even then, I wouldn't stake my life on it. Which means 100% protection that we seek, no. 100% is not going to happen, no. Not possible, in fact. That you're, you're completely secure. No. There is nothing like complete security when it comes to cyber warfare. Okay, because everything is online. It has been designed by an individual, which means it can be broken by an individual too. With the right tools, with the right knowledge. So, 100% security, even though desirable, is not possible. Look at this. There is nothing like absolute security. We are only trying to build comfort levels because security costs money and lack of it costs much more. A means question is there in the statement. That security costs money, but lack of it costs much more. Analyze. Go ahead. How would you write this answer? Those who send me your answers daily, go ahead, attempt this question for today. I'll just write this down here. That security costs, or write this, understand it this way, cyber security costs money, okay, however, lack of it costs much more, analyze, lack of it costs much more, those who are attempting the daily questions, go ahead, this is your question for today, you should be able to answer this question after this presentation is done, all right, comfort level is a manifestation of efforts, as well as realization of their effectiveness and limitations, that there are limitations in cyber security, that there is only that much level you can be cyber secure. Okay, 100%? Not possible. Fine. Go ahead, guys, those who do this, please, I'll expect answers to this as you always send me. So now let's look at the topic. With the initiatives taken by the government to increase the digital net first term, which means number of people who are online or access to digital services. Okay. How do you increase the digital net? So through programs like Digital India, through say cheaper data plans, which has happened now in India. Why do you think India is suddenly uh, so, like we are so good at it? Why do you think UPI has come up and this has come up and that has come up? Because the government's created an ecosystem. At the same time, cheap data, cheap mobile phones. Then you also had COVID-19 pandemic, which means everyone got online. Okay, Jan Trinity came up, delivery of services online, everything came up online, which means what? You have created a system wherein things, citizen-centric services are being delivered through the digital medium. So you have more and more people in the digital net. Now you can fill your uh, ITR online. Yeah, speak with your parents for, uh, for, uh, once, you know, they'll tell you, just say 10, 15 years ago. Not even 10, 15, in fact, lesser, just relatively uh, nearby, not very far. You will see that you had to actually go ahead and do the whole process in person. Right? This whole faceless thing that we talk about is essentially what? That there is no human interaction anymore. It's you operating or interacting with a particular system. That is it. So with more and more people now coming up, every type of service is available online, from marriage registration to debt registration to this, that. Everything is there. So there are innumerable challenges and the biggest of them is cyber security. This is a byproduct of this increase of digital net. That more and more people online, more services now being delivered online. Okay. Policy is being introduced online. So which means people are have to be made aware. At the same time, organizationally also, you have to be completely secure. The onus is on the organization. Okay, I will tell you Bulbul, this is those who want to send the answers, well this is my email ID, okay go ahead, I already have like around 7-8 people who send me daily answers, we always discuss their uh, feedback, how they improve their answers, go ahead, shoot me your answers at this email ID, bhuvan.jha at studyiq.com, alright, okay. So in India, a company, organization or an individual is attacked every 11 seconds. Look at this now, guys. This is the scale of the problem. Where do most of the attacks originate from? Well, you can roughly say Pak, China, Turkey. Okay. These are the nations which originate the attack against us. It does not mean, I'm obviously, I'm not blaming the countries here. 
or maybe I am. But then the fact is that India is under threat from these particular organizations. You also have Russian hackers, in fact. Okay, but then you have North Korean hackers. So these states are the ones where you find, say, the majority of the uh, uh, cyber uh, threats that come from. Okay. So the Indian Information Act 2000, the IT Act, in fact, the only act in place today is ineffective. The act was enforced two decades back and it was aimed at enabling e-commerce in the IT sector. You see, this was, this act when it was there, it was looking at creating the ecosystem, guys. Now the ecosystem has been created. In fact, it is fledgling. It, it is one of the best in the world, which means now no more is the scope of this act uh, limited to just creating. You need to basically change the act, bring in say the checks and balances that should exist. Okay. So this, this is the problem. Our act currently in place is, is not suitable for the contemporary uh, uh, realities of today. Okay. That is not working out. So obviously we need to go ahead and change the scope of the act. Write this down if you're again taking notes. Change the scope of the IT Act. Okay. Even though the amendments were made in 2008, it was a mistake to deem all cyber crimes as bailable offenses. You see, all cyber crimes are treated as bailable offenses. What are bailable offenses? Wherein you are you can apply for bail from the court. Okay. Non-bailable offenses where you can't. Once you are caught, once you are in the process. You stay within the jail or whatever it is. You do not get out. Okay. You will you will be sent to judicial uh, custody, JC. Okay. You will be sent to judicial custody. First, there is remand. So you are arrested. Okay. Then after that, the police takes you for remand, which means interrogation. After that, you apply for bail. If you do not uh, get bail, then you go for JC, which is judicial custody. If you get bail. Then you go back home. So the whole proceedings happen after that. Okay. These are this is the whole weight functions. So which means all cyber crimes, well, you are going to get bail and essentially go home. You are not going to spend much time. Why do you think bail's bail is important? What is the purpose of bail? So that you should not tamper with evidence. Okay. So that you shouldn't tamper with evidence. The court should be reasonably satis satisfied. That okay, if you are given bail, you should not go out and say tamper with the evidence which will uh, compromise the investigation of the police. Now bear in mind that if all cyber crime offenses are treated as bailable offenses, the chances are that well you will take care of the evidence. Okay. Also, not all cyber crimes are serious and uh, of the same serious in magnitude. Yes, some might actually compromise the privacy of people scar them for their life okay completely you can you have the power to attack anyone's reputation money because everything is online no? so again this is a lacuna guys as a result while the crimes kept increasing there was a famine of convictions because offenders on bail managed to manipulate and destroy evidence see the problem because it is bailable you are just unable to get convictions what happens after this after the proceedings happen, then the judge will say, okay, guilty or not guilty. Whichever it is, not guilty. Now, if you have taken care of the evidence, you are going to be not guilty. You see? So, this whole process itself is compromised. Not working out. It's common sense. Okay? Not a lot of analysis, guys. You'll see, it's very, very understandable. But the problem is that cyber security is something which requires a lot of money. The problem comes down to money. We'll see how. So India was the most targeted country in 2022, see? Do we even realize? As a country, probably we don't. Why? Because again, we are 140 crore. Okay. At the same time, we are not China. Okay. We are India. Closer integration with the whole world is the buzzword, no, in India. We are looking at closer integration with, say, the global economies, becoming a world leader, all of that is spoken about. China, on the other hand, it's inward looking. Okay, it does not allow, say, particular companies to function. It has its own version of, say, Twitter. Weibo is there. Okay, so you realize Facebook does not function there; something else functions there. 
which means they have control over the data of their people. They have control over who gets into their system, who gets out of the system. Now, and I'm not saying that India should follow that model. Obviously not, because India and China are inherently different. Our thought processes don't match. However, we need to understand that our data is important. Because again, we are looking at 140 crore sample size. Do you realize? It's a huge problem, which is why we are the most targeted country right now. Okay, we may not realize this, but we are in fact. And more than that, look at it. Organizational level, government agencies being targeted. And I'm giving you very small examples that the agriculture department of say particular uh, state, its website gets targeted. It websites, its website gets, gets hit, right? So this is again a small uh, uh, example I'm telling you. If suppose the intelligence department, their website gets hit, they have a lot of critical information. How about say if ISRO's website or ISRO's particular servers get hit, then you realize the problem, right? So you are looking at these kind of hacktivism, which is what say the example I told you that people will uh, hack a particular website, okay? Deface it, okay? They will deface it, which means they will change whatever the photo or whatever is written there and then write their own political or ideological propaganda. You will often see the uh, hackers from Pakistan saying, obviously, they will not praise India, they will say bad things about India, something, 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 something. In retaliation, the Indian fellows will go ahead, hack their website and give them twice the uh, dose. Okay. So this is hacktivism. Phishing attack. What is phishing? Wherein you are able to say access the particular software, the particular system through a link. Manipulate someone in doing something that they would not have done otherwise. Okay. Ransomware, what happened in Ames? Yes, you download the critical data, tell them give me money or else you will not get it back. Bear in mind, Ames had sensitive medical data of so many individuals. Okay, it's the biggest hospital though in India. And medical data is what? A very private thing. Okay, right from an individual, a common citizen to say uh, the, the biggest uh, uh, say constitutional post president. They will have access to that data. You have a president's ward also. Okay. So if you go to say RNR, if you have been to this or if you have heard of this, the research and referral hospital in uh, Dholakua in New Delhi, it's, it's the army's hospital. So you have a presidential ward there, which is maintained 24-7 in case say there's a medical emergency with, for the president, with the president, right? So which means you're going to have access to data of the president's health. Now, if that gets compromised and if that, that gets say sold on the dark web, how does that reflect on the country? You see? That is the problem. So many of these attacks are state sponsored, which means done by states and are aimed at stealing sensitive information or cripple critical infrastructure of other countries. So twofold. One, obviously say you get the president's health record. Okay, so this is the problem, this is the problem. And that is sold in the dark net. Big, big embarrassment for India. At the same time, they are also looking at through these methods to control the critical infrastructure. Can we scuttle say, the power grid of the country. Imagine now, just a, uh, around say five, six, seven years ago, I think, before 2014, you had say the whole western sector, the power was compromised. There was no power right from say uh, 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 Punjab up till Kerala or some uh, group of states, you see. So if that can be done, that's a major issue. You are essentially just crippling the whole country, nothing, everything is moving to a standstill. Nothing is happening at all. So how are you going to make sure that does not happen? Because again, everything else aside, we may have the best of infrastructure, the best of weaponry and this and that. But if we do not have power, how are you going to safeguard our interest? So again, twofold interest guys. One is that you're looking at stealing sensitive information, number one. And number two, you're looking at scuttling critical infrastructure. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So, Digital Personal Data Projection Bill 2022, right to informational privacy has been upheld as a fundamental right by the Supreme Court. Please make a note of this case, the K.S. Putta Swami versus Union of India. Okay. So, you have the right to informational privacy, which is considered to be a fundamental right. Please make a note of this, guys. K.S. Putta Swami versus Union of India case in 2017. Okay. 
So what does this bill say? Usage of personal data by organizations must be done in a manner that is lawful, fair to the individuals and transparent to the individuals. Three, lawful plus fairness plus transparent. We will understand each of them now. What is the bill talking about? Okay. We will talk, we will understand about each of them now. So first let us understand what is a digital data principle. Whose data is being collected which means you. You are the data principle. Data fiduciary is the entity, the individual company, firm, state which decides the purpose and means of the processing. So you log on to say Twitter. Okay. When you go to sign up a new account, you will see at one place you have to say I agree which no one reads and everyone agrees by default. Have you done that? All of you must have done that. Even I have done that. So you go ahead. Terms and conditions. Some page, long page will be there. You quickly write. Yes, I agree. Account khol line. Jaldi, jaldi karo. Then after that, in that case, what happens? Twitter becomes your data fiduciary. You have now given right to Twitter. Say it will say access to this and this is required. You have given the right to Twitter, which means Twitter becomes a data fiduciary. You are the data principal, the person whose data is being used. Okay. So, how are you going to make sure that access to information, no? you talked about, here this one, lawful, fairness and transparent. So, access to information should be there in all the languages of the 8th schedule, the, all the 22 languages we have. Yes. So, you need to make sure that it is not just in Hindi or English, firstly. Okay. Person before agreeing should know what they are agreeing to. Okay. So, that information needs to come in all the languages because again we have the linguistic diversity. You can't just enforce people to say read in Hindi or English, not fair. Alright. Right to consent, right to erase, right to nominate. And there is also one thing that is called right to be forgotten. What is right to be forgotten? Huh? So, if you, you must have seen, say something you have done, some misdemeanor, okay. Now you will see it straight away, articles are published about it, newspaper reports have come, study IQ has also come, I have also come and I have discussed it here for say 20 minutes. Now your life goes on 15, 20 years. Now you want to say that, okay, that happened say in 15, 20 years ago. Why is it still being uh, there? Why is it still there on the internet? Why do not I have the right to be forgotten? In which case the Supreme Court has said that fair and accurate reporting, well, that does that coin does not coincide with the right to be forgot uh, to be forgotten. Okay, so that is it. That eventually, something that you have done say today should not hamper your uh, uh, life say 15 years later. Okay, so. Right to be forgotten is also a critical part of it. However, right now, fair and accurate, accurate reporting of it does not say uh, compromise that particular right. Okay. So, right to consent, right to erase, same thing, you know, that you are looking at something, some misdemeanor that you did. You went ahead, you were there in a theft, you got caught, articles got written, then you probably served your sentence, whatever time period the court gave you, you served the sentence, came out and now you are like, okay, now I have reformed myself. I am no more guilty of theft, why is that article still there? Okay. And right to nominate, in the case of your untimely death, who is the one person who gets access and control of your data, just like a bank account. Okay. You nominate no, someone, a nominee, in my say absence, that person will be responsible for this bank account. Same thing. Right to nominate is, who will access and have control over my data, say after I am dead. Okay. Next, going forward. So, the criticism now, the government will propose to allow transfer of data and storage in trusted geographies, where you store your data is important. If you are storing it within the Indian territory, it's fine. But all these companies, Twitter, Amazon, Google, all of these, their servers are located across the world, which means your information is going out of an Indian territory somewhere. So, the government has said that if it is going to a friendly foreign nation, that is fine. But you cannot store data in say China or Pakistan, which is why all the PUBG lovers, they will understand this now, why their game got banned. Okay. Because the data was being stored in a country that is not categorized as a friendly foreign country. So obviously, you either follow our law when you are operating in our uh, country 
or you go ahead, you are banned. Bye bye. This is what happened. Okay. So data sovereignty. These terms critically important, guys. Make sure that you are aware of these terms: data sovereignty, data localization, data residency. I have discussed this in the previous uh, editorial edge classes. However, it's advised that you go ahead and do this. Often refers to the understanding that the data which are stored outside of an organization's host country and still subject to the laws in the country, okay, where the data are stored. Do you understand that? So the data which is stored outside, say for example, Indian people's data stored somewhere in X country, okay, and now it should be subject to the laws of say X country plus if you want it to use in Indian context, well you should be able to do it. That's the eventual point of the retrieval of data. Which laws govern the data? Because it's a transboundary thing happening. Your servers are located in say uh, Switzerland. You are sitting here in India. Now once your data goes there, it should be, uh, you should be able to get it back. That's the whole point. Which laws govern that data now? India or Switzerland? That question should also come to your mind. Okay. So that's data sovereignty. So the way forward, obviously increase awareness, go ahead, digital literacy at an in, in, uh, individual level, okay, at an organizational level, build resilient systems, build resilient systems guys, write this down, okay, at the national level I told you, amend the act, change the scope of the act. So you see, your answer, if it includes all of these three facets. You are in involving each and every stakeholder in this game. The individual, the organization, the country. If you talk about all three in your answers, good answer. What most students will do is, just focus on say this. Huh? Create awareness. Don't tell them to click links. That is part. You have to see the macro picture guys. You are writing means. Or you are going for prelims. You are hoping to become a part of the steel frame of this country. You need to have a bird's eye vision. If you have this horse tunnel vision, if you'll just see individual, individual, what's the point? Okay. Then what's the point? Why are you appearing for civil services? Right? Periodical backup of data. What AIMS should have done? Go ahead. It might be expensive. But then you are AIMS. If you don't do it, who will? Okay. Backup of data. So that you do not fall prey to ransomware. Okay. This does not happen that you are, you are expected to pay some, how many number of bitcoins to access and get back your data. That shouldn't happen. Alright. Okay. Knowledge gain from actual attacks. So you should understand, no? a SOP has to be put in place. A standard operating procedure. Okay. You need a standard operating procedure to figure out, okay, in the case of an attack, what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do to prevent such attack? There needs to be learning from this because again, like the graph I told you, it's going to keep going up this cyber attacks. Right now, we are the most attack country. Do you think that's going to stop? No. 140 crore of us, not many are educated enough to understand the full scope and expanse of cyber security. We are easy target right now. Okay. So go ahead, do this. Gain the knowledge share. Knowledge sharing, in fact, you should do. International uh, agreements and conventions we'll quickly talk about, say. Okay. So that learnings from there need to be incorporated in the individual, in the organization, and at the national level. Only then are you looking at, say, actually countering this problem with a practical strategy. Or else everything else will be just hawa bazi. Okay? Alright. So develop core skills in cyber security. Which organization? You will understand this. All this will be there. Which organization is responsible for cyber security in India? this. Please write this down. Cert in. Okay. Cert in is again under the ministry of, uh, it's under MITI. Electronics and Information Technology. Okay. Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. Cert in Computer Emergency Response Team of India, it is called. Okay. So this is our primary body that looks at, say, uh, taking care of cyber security, cyber threats. So certain needs to be given more and more power because this is our only body right now. We need more of such bodies, proliferation of particular bodies 
for particular types of attack okay now this is again a defensive organization guys please understand its job is to make sure that if there are 50 attacks coming towards india it is able to repel we need an offensive body also because the chinese have a body like i told you they have a particular arm in the military whose only job is to engage in cyber warfare do you realize so we need an offensive body also not just a defensive body okay a dedicated cyber security law see the legal framework right now does not exist it's grim picture okay it's a grim picture especially because again most of us are online half the day all everything we do online from upi transactions bheem payment ha huh, income tax passport you need more and more of say awareness at least and at least a law if something does someone does wrong the person should not be straight away able to get bail in like 48 hours and go home and then do it again and then remove any trace that he did it yes do you realize that is a problem countries like china vietnam singapore australia they have laws china has more than a law which means they are able to deal with challenges better okay so this is again primary focus that it needs to be there all right uh, quickly just write down two more things then we will uh, uh, come to the end of this topic wait i'll just find some space ha huh. just write down two more things guys at the international level okay one you are looking at is the budapest convention just make a note of this uh i will include this in uh, the pdf that i upload on the telegram channel okay so the budapest convention is an international treaty okay write this down it's an international treaty and it essentially seeks to address uh, internet and computer crime okay computer crime cyber crime only now is india a part of this treaty no india is not a part of the budapest convention write this down guys not a part of this okay first is the budapest convention then you have the internet governance forum number 2 write this down the igf the internet governance forum i think it this is the name only ha huh? internet governance forum quickly write this down for this also so uh, the igf is essentially to do with uh, bringing all the stakeholders okay the government plus the industry plus uh, the private also i believe ha huh? the individual the civil society civil society government industry plus civil society bring them all together and then essentially like create the best practices you know create the best practices okay what are the best practices that is needed okay and at the indian level at the national level write down a couple of things that we have done so that you are able to form the basic analysis for this at the national level number 1 uh national level what we have done is the cyber security strategy came up yes national cyber security strategy in 2020 okay this document had come up okay so again this lays out the whole outlook as to how we should go about doing it but then again good morning sugyani how are you welcome welcome all be a bit late but fine welcome okay so this is essentially a strategy document this essentially asks for cyber security audits okay that you do an audit management of how secure are you where are the problems where are the gaps that need to be identified and filled okay so the national cyber security strategy is one number two um this what else is there ha huh, the i4c i4c what is the i4c guys who can tell me the i4c so uh, i4c is indian cyber crime coordination center see there are four c's no indian cyber crime coordination center the i4c all right so this has been made it was set up in 2020 okay set up in 2020 sure anjali in fact uh, all of this slide no all of this slide uh, will be given uh, on the telegram channel you can access it i upload it normally around noon okay around noon i give do it so that at least those who are going through the lecture they can go through it night hota kya na most of the students will just look at the pdf i want you to go through the lecture because the pdf has the core material that i am transmitting to you but the analysis 
आई कैंट इंक्लूड इट नहीं तो फिर वो बहुत टेक्स्ट हैवी हो जाएगा इट बिकम्स वेरी टेक्स्ट हैवी ओके सो द आई फोर सी द इंडियन साइबर क्राइम कोऑर्डिनेशन सेंटर इट वॉज सेट अप इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी ओके नाउ वट वुड द नेम द नेम सजेस्ट यू विल अंडरस्टैंड वट इट डज दैट इट इज लुकिंग टू डील विद ऑल टाइप्स ऑफ साइबर क्राइम ओके बट अगेन इट मोर एंड मोर थ्रस्ट नीड्स टू बी पुट गाइज डू अंडरस्टैंड द पिक्चर दैट आई पेंटेड फॉर यू इट्स नॉट अ वेरी पॉजिटिव पिक्चर वी नीड टू डू बी डूइंग अ लॉट मोर एंड एट एन इंस्टीट्यूशनल लेवल जस्ट टू स्पीक इन हिंदी फॉर टू मिनट्स आई टेल यू अभी तक क्या चल रहा है ना एवरी थिंग इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन कि हमारे कुछ हैकरस मिल के ये सारा काम करेंगे ठीक है वो आप नहीं कर सकते ऑब्वियसली वो अपने देश प्रेम के चलते कर रहे हैं बट वॉट यू नीड इज इंस्टीट्यूशनल लेवल देश प्रेम टू कम थ्रू वेन इट कम्स टू से साइबर सिक्योरिटी ओके यू कांट ऑलवेज बी रिलायंट ऑन से नॉन स्टेट एक्टर्स टू से फॉर ऑफेंसिव केपेबिलिटीज ओके यू नीड टू हैव एन इंस्टीट्यूशनल बॉडी दैट टेक्स केयर ऑफ बोथ डिफेंसिव हमारा सर्टन करता है सी ई आर टी आई एन ओके माइटी के अंदर है ये एम ई आई टी है तो दिस इज अ डिफेंसिव बॉडी बट वी नीड एन ऑफेंसिव बॉडी ना ओके ऑल राइट जस्ट टू शो द क्वेश्चन टू अंजलि बिकॉज आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू डिसअपॉइंट हर वन सेकेंड अंजलि लेट मी गो बैक टू द क्वेश्चन जो आप पूछ रहे थे हाँ साइबर सिक्योरिटी कॉस्ट्स मनी हाउ एवर लैक ऑफ इट कॉस्ट्स मच मोर एनालाइज नाउ यू विल रियलाइज दैट यू हैव ऑल द थ्री टैंजेंट्स रेडी फॉर दिस आंसर कॉस्ट हो गई साइबर सिक्योरिटी कॉस्ट्स मनी हाउ एवर लैक ऑफ इट कॉस्ट्स मच मोर एनालाइज दिस क्वेश्चन I think you will be able to answer comprehensively now, to the best level of your satisfaction. Just make sure that you include the three stakeholders in this: the government, the industry, and the civil society. Okay? If you do that, compact answer, good answer. ठीक है? All right. So that completes cyber security. Okay? Again, a very basic basic level discussion I have done, so that to not confuse you a lot. you should have the basic fundamental blocks once after this if you go and read an article you will be able to analyze it a lot better it will not be like what is i4c written there wah likha hoga us article mein i4c so now you will be able to understand it talks about indian cyber crime coordination center which was set up in 2020 which is looking to address the problem of cyber crimes so what is it supposed to do uska analysis go ahead and read it now it will be easier for you okay okay uh, one one thing that i quickly wanted to uh, announce guys is this particular batches the p2i highly successful batch in fact you must be if i were to tell you the exact number of students that have signed up for it it will blow your mind like large amount of many number of students have joined up for this and many have missed out in spite of me coming requesting imploring you please come please come 19th we begin on 6 many were there at 8 pm calling us emailing us ki how do we sign up once it's done it's done but then good news for those who did not sign up even though we have just started the orientation classes have only been finished so far the real classes are going to begin or have already just begun which means you can go ahead and sign up still all right go ahead and sign up 30th june is when we finally close this no more after that because and you will see those who have joined you will see how it is this sh small batches short sh uh, small number of students to facilitate that one to one interaction guys Doubt resolution is of critical importance in this preparation. You will have doubts. If you don't have doubts, मतलब आप समझे ही नहीं बात. ठीक है. So this is being done. Use this code that offers you a substantial discount of close to forty thousand rupees. It's huge amount of money. So you get a discount of forty thousand rupees if you use this. B A live. Go ahead. Classes are already starting. In fact, have already started. Every evening six p.m. Some of the best faculty, you know, some of the teachers with the most clear, like refined clarity of thought. you will see those who have been uh, uh, following this lectures you will see how these are inherently different from anything else okay here we are not just going and say i, I could have easily just showed you one question ta 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 and then one paragraph answer that this is the answer but then that's that's the myopic way of my understanding i don't want to do that i want to go ahead and deep dive into a topic give you the feedback and the ammunition that you need to write an answer writing is a problem for most of the students that have observed theek hai so go ahead sign up for this fine let's look at the second topic for the day guys the global gender gap report which organization publishes it i had mentioned at the beginning of my class can someone tell me in the chat meanwhile i'll have some water 
Which organization publishes the global gender gap report, guys? Quickly, let me know. Come on, who, who will tell me this? I had mentioned at the beginning of the class that uh, a particular organization mentions the gender gap report. Okay. Who is? The WEF does it, no? Economic Forum. Yeah. The World Economic Forum publishes this, evaluates progress towards gender parity, which is male equals female in all dimensions. What are the dimensions? Economic participation and opportunity, education, health, politics, political empowerment. Three, four angles. Are they part of the labor force? How well educated are they? What's their health and nutritional status? Do they also have access to political office? Okay, Anjali, I'll show you. Just bear with me for 10 minutes. I shall show you my... Uh, uh, a telegram channel. Just quickly understand this first. Four four angles we are looking at. Okay, four fold strategy. Okay, politics, economics, health, education. Do you see? For any comprehensive developed individual, you need access to all four. Most countries will fail where? In education, in health, and in political political year. Political chance or opportunity, you can say. In which case, we have done exceptionally well if you look at the history. Our involvement of women in political uh, or uh, politics or high office has been there si since independence. Sarojini Naidu, Indra Gandhi, Meera Kumar, all of these names, you know, you think of it. Mamata Banerjee, Jaya Lalita, they are powerful uh, leaders that have come up from the grassroots. You know, they are not, say, products of, say, because their father was a politician, so they, you know, most of them came up from grassroots, which means that you have that access of opportunity, which probably most countries don't have. In fact, I think the US of A, the highly famed country, does not have had a single female president so far. You see? Whereas we have had, right? And, and the day is not far when you will see, say, a, a chief of army staff will also be a lady officer. Good. You should have access to all sorts of opportunity. Okay? So, global gender gap index between 0 to 1, 1 being full gender parity. Obviously, the countries that you would expect to be doing well are doing well. Iceland is like uh, the undertaker of this particular uh, report. You know, that 16 times I think it is. If you will see, Iceland is the number one for the 16th consecutive year. Yes, so they are just immovable from the top spot. Okay, so the ge global gender gap score is 68.4 percent and at this rate 131 years we will take as a whole like as a whole uh, uh, global uh, community to achieve this in all of these realms. Okay, so it's we are still just just past first division. We are nowhere near say distinction at all. Okay, so Iceland. Huh. Sorry, not 16th, 14th time. So, it's the undertaker of this particular event. Okay. The most gender equal country for the 14th consecutive year. Thereafter, the other Nordic nations that you would expect, Norway, Finland, Sweden, all of them make up the top five. Okay. India, last year, 135. This year, 127. Our neighboring Bangladesh is, I think, 59th rank. Okay. So, where are the challenges for India now? India has achieved parity in enrollment across all levels of education. The four angles that I told you, okay, political, economic, health, education. So, we have done well in education, okay. India's progress in economic participation and opportunity remains a challenge. This plus uh, economic, huh? economic participation remains a challenge. Made strides in political empowerment, achieving 25.3% parity. Have you seen that particular thing where 33% of all seats in the parliament are to be reserved for women? Yes, that becomes an issue every year. Every five years we hear this will happen, this will happen, doesn't happen. So, But you see that in the current Lok Sabha also, the number of women members have has increased, which points to an upward swing. Okay. You look at, say, the various state assemblies, you will see a large number of women uh, uh, legislators now, which is good. 
you see the upsc results are huh? four women in the top five extremely good cbse results obviously it's the girl students who always is so what which means our progress is beginning right from the nursery level it's happening as a student progresses in her life it's happening however more needs to be done in what area see we need to do more in this political empowerment formalize this 33 percent first it gives the signal the messaging is important guys okay just having an upward swing is okay but if you institutionalize that particular thought it percolates down you know right from sansad bhavan it will percolate down to the lowest form of local self-governance that yes women are an equal part of the conversation okay so uh, just look quickly tell me about the some of the uh, policies guys let's discuss the policies because i want to discuss policies first okay so let's look at some policies that we have done for say women empowerment or gender parity can you tell me some quickly think this you all have heard of beti bachao beti padhao have you heard of this you have also heard of the mahila shakti kendra have you heard of this also you also are aware of that uh, say all subsidies or any particular policy that comes up where there is a financial incentive to be provided normally the government insists that it is made in the name of the female head of the family you see that is the way how you empower from the grassroots because again money gives power i've told you this previously also that is how you break the power center in the house that power is say delegated or taken away from the father and given to mother now equal status in the house which means equal status in the society which means equal status in the national level that is how change functions when you are dealing with individuals guys okay so this also is there that the female head of the family she is given incentives okay number 4 write down these guys this will help you sukanya samriddhi yojana what is the sukanya samriddhi yojana what is what happens there i think uh, this is sukanya samriddhi is the one where economically weaker girls उनके लिए बैंक अकाउंट खोला जाता है राइट राष्ट्रीय महिला कोष इज देयर राइट फीमेल ऑन्टरप्रनरशिप मोर थ्रस्ट राइट यू हैव स्टैंड अप इंडिया एंड मेक इन इंडिया विच हैव पर्टिकुलर पॉलिसीज दैट एम्पावर वीमेन वीमेन ऑन्टरप्रनर्स आर गिवन स्पेशल स्टेटस स्पेशल फैसिलिटीज वाई आर यू डूइंग दैट सो दैट दिस दिस रिपोर्ट विल इट्स नॉट आर प्राइमरी ऑब्जेक्टिव बट द फोकस इज ऑन चेंज है कंट्री एजुकेशन यू मस्ट हैव सीन से हेल्थ किट नाम पर आप फोलिक एसिड खिलाते हो यू नो फॉलिक एसिड सप्लीमेंट्स न्यूट्रिशनल सप्लीमेंट्स डेट वी डिस्कस्ड इन आई सी डी एस लेक्चर जस्ट अ कपल ऑफ डेज अगो आई होप मेनी ऑफ यू हैव गॉन थ्रू इट गो थ्रू दैट पी डी एफ गाइज दैट आई सी डी एस पी डी एफ आई कैन नॉट ओवर स्ट्रेस दिस मेकिंग श्योर दैट यूर हेल्थ एंड न्यूट्रिशनल अवेयरनेस इज टू द पॉइंट बिकॉज दोज कॉन्सेप्ट यू आर गोइंग टू फ्रीली यूज इन ऑल ऑफ दीज that is the core concept guys when it comes to health nutrition of both the mother and the child the icds okay go through it it's the whole document is available on my telegram channel for those of you who are joining it for the first time stand by i will show you my telegram channel id go ahead join it access this document read it it's going to be of extreme benefit to you okay so that is it guys uh once again small announcement and then after i come to the last part of my class so the optional batches well are already beginning optional decide your optional first make sure that the optional you choose is the subject of your interest don't choose the optional because i told you or because some other faculty told you or because some other aspirant told you that's not how it functions you are the one who's going to have to study that you are the one who's going to have to write long long answers on it extensive study deep study in that subject is required so make sure that you are able to at least hold your interest for say an year at least okay and to help you do that well obviously the new courses are just beginning go ahead use the code ba live make sure that you get a good discount for yourself and uh, we will see you on the optional classes too all right so first decide your optional guys okay all right so this is the telegram channel guys those who are watching this many schemes bulbul if you look at it no the most of the schemes will have a tangent of empowerment of say the females the the women the girl child okay they will have some aspect 
in embedded in that particular policy which is the best part of policy you know when you study policy you realize okay the first tangent is said to address problem x but with problem x you are also looking at uh, addressing problem x y z a b c and a large part of that has to do with inclusive policy making okay this is the term that you should actually freely use also in your answers inclusive policy making okay which means you are addressing not just say the primary stakeholder but also all the others that you can benefit out of that policy which indian government does brilliantly our policies are always very inclusive well thought out and larger in goal and who makes those policies people like you who get selected yes which means they have done extensive study somewhere and only then have developed that thought process it does not happen overnight guys i have told you all right so uh, make sure you join my telegram channel send me the answers if you are uh, writing the answer to that question on cyber security i suggest you do by the way okay it's a very important question it's a question mirrored on the type of question that is asked in mains so go ahead attempt it uh, send the answers to me on my email id and go ahead access the pdf of this lecture in my telegram channel uploaded at 12 and on that note my dear students my dear uh, audience it's a wrap for today thank you for joining if before going just quickly may i request you go ahead and like the stream for me minor happiness is an educator gets okay go ahead and like the stream for me and i shall uh, see you tomorrow morning 8 am once again and tomorrow most likely we will dive into the whole india us takeaways because i think then we will have a comprehensive understanding of the whole implications of the deals that have been signed okay i just didn't want to limit today's class okay he signed a deal for jet engines to be made in india hal plus ge what's the implication is what i want to co communicate to you for that i'll have to go through the whole thing in detail which i'll do today and tomorrow morning we'll take a look at the india us madhusudan hindi mein send kar sakte hindi mein ye wala document aap puch rahe ho kya ha ha aap kariye na madhusudan aap hindi mein bhejo koi tension nahi hai theek hai we will correct it the pro problem language shouldn't be a problem thought process is the problem theek hai aap bhejo hum log kar lenge all right thank you guys thank you coder ajay raj bulbul thank you for joining and all those who are watching this uh, please consider liking sharing subscribing to study iqis and i shall see you tomorrow morning 8am have a good day guys bye